Sigma Tiger News. What's going on today? Silent Mind Eater? Memory card murder? Migrant mayhem. It continues all day, 24 7. Puppy Pedo? What? <laughs> Sigma Tiger here with you in 4K, five days a week. Come get some of the hottest, juiciest beef online. And it's been a while. Remember, 10,000 subs, the mask comes off. We'll reveal <clears throat> who the monster is. All right, let's dive right into it. What do we got going on? Silent epidemic eating away American minds. A sudden, unprecedented change in mental disorders has scientists worried about what it could mean. Well, what could it mean? Let's dive in. Billy was a bright 10-year-old boy with two Ivy League-educated parents. He was book smart, got straight A's in school, but lacked street smarts. He had no critical thinking. He was also a poor sport. Billy would frequently lie and cheat when playing board games or participating in team activities and have full-blown meltdowns when he lost. His friends, who had been with him since kindergarten, began to lose patience. His parents recognized that something had to be done. So Billy's parents brought him to Dr. Victoria Dunkley, a pediatric psychiatrist specializing in screen use. <clears throat> After a four-week screen fast prescribed by Dr. Dunkley, which eliminated all access to TVs, phones, and video games, Billy's problems miraculously cleared up. His parents were so pleased they decided to maintain the fast. Well, what is a fast? You've heard that. Like, you know, is it speed? No, like in the morning, you eat a breakfast. But that's a fast. Take that and just crack that into two words. That compound word there, break it in. You got break and fast. Well, we all know what break means. It's like to make something inoperable or to render useless um, or to stop, right? And a fast is when you stop eating. That's what it originally was. You're going to fast from food while you're sleeping, you know? You're involuntarily fasting from food while your body is at rest. Well, you can also voluntarily choose to do it. It's intermittent fasting has become very popular over the past few years. Well, it's centuries old, millennia old fasting. It's used to help clear up different ailments and to re-energize the body. Uh, I spoke about this before. Uh, I talk about aging and stuff like that. There's this dude popping pills all the time. He's like 47 and he's trying to live forever and it's a million dollars he's putting into his body and He's taking like hundreds of pills a day. Well, this guy doesn't understand that the body is a machine. And the more you use it, the uh, faster it'll wear out. Just like a car. If you have it in your driveway and drive it once a day for a couple of miles, and that car will probably last a really long time. Uh, if you drive it 100 miles uh, or more every single day, then that car won't last very long. Especially without proper maintenance, which would be rest for a human body. Okay, so fasting. Uh they decided to eliminate the screen for this young boy, Billy. And guess what? Six months passed and Billy's friends were no longer avoiding him. His sportsmanship had improved markedly. Billy decided to run for class president and delivered a speech, something that would have previously terrified him. So his anxiety was, was down. Billy is one of Dr. Dunkley's many patients whose mental and behavioral problems disappeared once they eliminated or significantly reduced screen time. Excessive use of screens has become an epidemic silently eroding lives with little resistance. A 2012 survey by Gallup found that about 60% of young adults admitted to spending too much of their time on the internet. In a subsequent survey in 2022, 83% of smartphone users said they kept their phone near them almost all the time during the waking hours. And we covered this yesterday. Uh, the NIH has stopped uh, their uh, trials on, or their experiments, and their how it, the uh, radiation emitted from a cell phone affects the body. They've ceased all uh, research, let's say, into that specific category. Well, 83% now, it's up from 60. We've got a major increase here of almost 50%, probably like a 42% increase there. 
And uh, where are they keeping these phones? Pockets, you know what I mean? Like around uh, organs. Anyway, they're saying that there is some correlation between uh, some problems internally and keeping your cell phone uh, on your person. Well, guess what? Not only is it bad for your body, it's bad for your eyes and your brain. That's why they have a blue light filter put in there. So they say, like, you know, if you use this thing right before bed, maybe you should put on a blue light filter. It might help you fall asleep if you find yourself restless at night. You're wondering why. Well, guess what? If you eliminate this stuff from your life, because guess what? Again, this stuff is brand new. Technology, like touch screens. When I was a child, it was a fantasy. You know, you imagine that. Ooh, can you imagine how cool that would be if you could touch the screen and move stuff around and manipulate it? Well, it's totally normal now. Kids go up to TVs and try and swipe them, and they're like, TV's broke. And you're like, no. You just don't understand how everything works yet. <clears throat> well, guess what? Screens can overstimulate our brains, resulting in perpetual stress, also known as a fight-or-flight state. Uh, this state taxes the brain and body and makes us prone to meltdowns, depression, and anxiety when even minor changes in the environment occur. It's a rising problem. Initial link between screen time and poor mental health was spotted through generational studies by... Uh, Jean Twenge, a professor at San Diego State University with a doctorate in psychology. I got used to changes that would grow slowly and steadily over time, as Twenge said in a TEDx talk after 2010. I started to see some changes that were much more sudden. I had really never seen anything like it. So it's increasing. So the whole point is uh, put your phone down. Don't worry if you lose it. I understand it's expensive. Just go ahead and throw that $5 insurance on there. You get a... Uh, a refurbished one if you lose it. It's not a big deal, okay? Put it on the cloud. Don't worry about it. It's just a device. What's more important is your mental health. So wake up in the morning and leave your phone there. Go brush your teeth. And I hear using your left hand uh, in the morning will change your life as well. So go ahead and try something wild like that. Challenge yourself. Moving right along. <clears throat> Gene editing precisely repairs immune cells. Well, what could be happening here? Some heredity genetic defects cause an exaggerated immune response that can be fatal. Using the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing tool, such defects can be corrected, thus normalizing the immune response. As researchers led by Klaus Radjuski uh, from the Max Delbruck Center now report in Science Immunology, familial hemophagocytic hemo Lymphohistiocytosis, FHL, is a rare disease of the immune system that usually occurs in infants and young children on the age of 18 months. The condition is severe and has a high mortality rate. It is caused by various gene mutations that prevent uh, cytotoxic T cells from functioning normally. These are a group of immune cells that kill virus-infected cells or otherwise altered cells. Uh, basically, what they look for when they test your blood are heightened uh, or elevated levels sorry, of T cells basically showing that there's something going on inside and your body's trying to stop it. So let's do some further examination. Let's test some more. Well, if you don't know, CRISPR is a gene editing tool. What? What do you mean a gene editing tool? You don't know about CRISPR? Yeah. They go ahead and, uh, not exactly sure, don't quote me on this because this stuff is intense, uh, they basically uh, use this tool and repair cells by adding additional uh, cells from other things potentially. Check it out, CRISPR. Anyway, let's dive in. Doctors treat FHL with a combination of chemotherapy, immunosuppression, and bone marrow transplantation, but many children still die of the disease. It says uh, Professor Klaus Rajewski, who heads the Immune Regulation and Cancer Lab at the Max Delbrick Center. He and his team therefore developed a new therapeutic strategy using the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing tool. The researchers succeeded in repairing defected T-cells from mice and from two critically ill infants. The repaired cytotoxic T-cells then function normally with the mice recovering from hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Yeah, okay, so they've done it on mice and two kids. How long the protection lasts is uncertain. The first author of the paper, Dr. Z uh, Jun Li, used blood samples from two sick infants to test whether the strategy also works in humans. Uh, one had a defective uh, perforin gene, the other a different defective gene. 
Our gene repair technique is more precise than previous methods, and T-cells are virtually unchanged after undergoing gene editing. It was also fascinating to see how effectively the memory T-cells would be multiplied and repaired from even a small amount of blood. So they're not actually going into the human and doing this, or the, the creature, it seems. They're doing it in blood samples as of now. So are they able then to inject that blood back into the human? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Um, we hope that our mechanism of action is a breakthrough in treating FHL, says Rajewski, either to gain more time for a successful bone marrow transplant or even as a treatment itself. And there you have it. We'll keep you posted on CRISPR and how we're editing our genes now. Uh, and as well, if you don't know, they've been doing it to animals, so they can certainly make it happen. There's glow-in-the-dark rabbits, all kinds of things like that. Check it out. CRISPR. Glow-in-the-dark. Google it. A woman stole a memory card from a truck. The gruesome footage is now key to an Alaska murder trial. Okay. Interesting. So here we have a gentleman with a very uh, glaring look in his eye. Probably surprised to have his photo taken. And he's in an orange jumpsuit. A woman with a lengthy criminal history, including theft, assault, and prostitution, got into a truck with a man who had picked her up for a date near downtown Anchorage. When he left her alone in the vehicle, she stole a digital memory card from the center console. Now, more than four years later, what she found on that card is key to a double murder trial set to begin this week. Gruesome photos and videos of a woman being beaten and strangled at Marriott Hotel, her attacker speaking in a strong accent as he urged her to die, her wet blanket-covered body being snuck outside on a luggage cart. In my movies, everybody always dies, the voice says on the video. What are my followers going to think of me? People need to know when they're being serial killed. Interesting, so uh, is he posting this stuff on the dark web? About a week after she took the SD card, the woman turned it over to police, who said they recognized the voice as that of Brian Stephen Smith, now 52, a uh, South African native they knew from a prior investigation court document, say. Smith had has pleaded not guilty to 14 charges, including first and second degree murder, sexual assault, and tampering with evidence in the deaths of Kathleen Henry, 30, and Veronica Abichuk, who was 52 when her family reported her missing in February 2019, seven months after they last saw her. <clears throat> Henry and Abichuk were both Alaska Native women who had experienced homelessness. They were from small villages in western Alaska. Henry from Eek and Abichuk from Stebbins. Authorities say Henry was the victim whose death was recorded at the time. Uh, the town place suites by Marriott, a hotel in Midtown Anchorage. Smith was registered to stay there from September 2nd to September 4th, 2019. The first images showing her body were time-stamped at about 1 a.m. on September 4th, police said. The last images on the card were taken early on September 6th and showed Henry's body in the back of a black pickup truck. According to charging documents, location data showed that at the time the photo was taken, Smith's phone was in the area of Rainbow Valley Road along the Seward Highway south of Anchorage, the same area where Henry's body was found several weeks later, police said. And there is an image of the woman, a uh, sister perhaps, Photo of her sister, yeah, Veronica Abichuk, taken during the day of shopping in 2013. So they interrogated Smith about the Marriott case. He offered up more information to police who escorted him to a bathroom. He had killed another woman, and he went on to identify her from a photo to provide a location of her remains. It, the, it, he pleaded not guilty. Okay, so perhaps uh, they have some defense of coercion, or he didn't have his rights read, something like that. With no prompting, he tells the troopers in the bathroom, I'm going to make you famous, District Attorney Brittany Dunlop said during a court hearing last week. He comes back in and says, you guys got some more time, you want to keep talking? And then he discloses the other murder. So this guy here is a uh, uh, someone seeking uh, attention and uh, trophies. And so he's, like, you know, he's your classic serial killer. Whatever. He's probably going to go to jail unless he's some sort of technicality that the police messed up. All right, so uh, we're at 11.53, I believe. We've got seven minutes left till World War III, so on board a U.S. aircraft carrier, a cat-and-mouse game with the Houthi forces plays out. Jets from the USS Eisenhower have conducted dozens of strikes in Yemen, but it's unclear whether they can destroy the Houthis' vast Iranian-supplied arsenal of missiles and drones. Absolutely, and uh, if you've been watching, of course you know that um, the U.S. went ahead and uh, talked to Iraq and went ahead and attacked some militants there, and Iraq was like, whoa, didn't get the memo. What are you doing? Get out of here. It was the second night in a row that aircraft from Eisenhower uh, have targeted Houthi militants in Yemen who are attacking cargo ships in the Red Sea. And also, U.S. assets. Don't forget that. They're uh, uh, military assets. They're attempting to strike with cruise missiles. So this article is already just kind of laying it thin. Adrenaline and morale appear to be running high among crew members on both USS ships to swipe the threat of incoming drones or ballistic missiles from the Houthis. Threat of, yeah. 
Uh, as the Eisenhower, Mason, and Company warships patrol the area, the weather is windy and warm, with a bright sun reflecting off the rippling water surrounding them. Yeah, so this is what the, all the old boys have been waiting for. You know, they're out on that boat. You know, they're, they're, they're chomping at the bit. When do we get to invade? When do we get to shoot some of these howitzers? Let's go. Like, that's why they joined the military. Like, hurrah, let's go. So what's happening? Nothing. They declined to comment on the effectiveness of the strikes in Yemen. Uh, they have not struck anything in uh, Iran as of just yet. So we're still at 1157. Tick tock. Canada's health care, uh, we talked about that. Uh, there's no anesthesiologist now. Surgeries are getting backlogged. And, and if you want to uh, have the uh, uh, suicide performed by a doctor, then you're going to have to wait. And, or you can do it the old-fashioned way, you know, the old rope over the uh, branch of a sturdy tree. Or, uh, you know, I, I won't suggest anything else because we don't want anyone to go ahead and do that. Uh, so they've uh, uh, halts the assisted suicide program for mentally ill due to a lack of doctors. Uh, a, la a lack of doctors or a lack of people who want to uh, murder people. Canada offers medically assisted death to terminally ill and chronically ill people, but the plan to extend the program to people with mental illness has divided Canadians. Absolutely. Controversial policy would allow anyone in Canada with an incurable medical condition to apply for assisted suicide, even if the disease is not terminal. Incurable, but not terminal, just uh, annoying, perhaps, uh, all the way up to very uncomfortable and uh, debilitating. So it is the most liberal uh, suicide, medical suicide uh, policy global, globally. Uh, they introduced the uh, medically assisted dying after some cruel in two, 2015 that requiring people to cope with intolerable suffering infringed on a uh, fundamental right to liberty and security. So why can't, uh, you know, I, I don't understand. So, like, they would rather die than live. And they want a doctor to do it. Well, are they incapable? So over 13,000 Canadians were euthanized as part of the program in 2022 alone. 13,000. When the program was announced late last year, one conservative lawmaker charged that the Liberal government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is promoting a culture of death. Absolutely. Uh, instead of helping you, let's kill you. And one uh, leaked document, or perhaps a document there, said they're, they're looking to save like $135 million a year with the MAID program of not providing those people with medical help. So there you go, another reason to, uh, to, uh, to come to Canada. U.S. sells off helium supply, stoking fears in the medical world. What? Privatizing the reserve may complicate distribution of the crucial element. So yeah, okay, what's going on? Helium? Just for balloons? No. This is used in the medical industry. The, and the U.S. has sold off their uh, supply. The U.S. government sold off the federal helium reserve this week to a private buyer, a worrying move to doctors and scientists who rely on the finite gas from everything from research to operating MRI machines. The deal is still being finalized with the highest bidder industrial gas company, Messer. NBC News reports, and it includes a 1 billion cubic foot underground stockpile in Amarillo, Texas, along with 420, sorry, 425 miles of pipelines that span several states. And while the government has been looking to offload the stockpile since the 90s, professionals who rely on helium fear that the red tape following the sale will slow down access to the high demand element and probably cause uh, prices to increase when everything is privatized um, like that. And if it seems like there's a monopoly, likely, if they're buying uh, the, the U.S. government's stockpile. A new owner will need to create some sort of lease to use the enrichment unit or build their own unit to enrich the helium. There's a whole host of issues that need to be resolved, and the concern is until they are resolved, the system will need to shut down. Yeah, okay, so uh, I'm sure they'll figure that out in the deal, and if they don't, well, huh, too bad. Good job, everybody. So congressionally... Uh, the sale reserve to a private party as congressionally mandated by law is not expected to meaningfully change the availability of helium. It's the coldest element on the planet, it's lighter than air, and it is unreactive, making it safe to, safer to use than other elements like hydrogen. It's essential to computer chip production, cooling, quantum computers, and MRI imaging. We'll keep you posted on the availability of helium. Trump wants to debate Biden immediately, but the president shrugs him off. Yeah, so uh, neither of the two uh, in, uh, candidates have debated anybody this year. Uh, and on Monday, he said, uh, Trump said on uh, Don Bangino, Don, Dan Bangino, the Don Bangino show, 
Dan Bongino. I'd like to call for immediately debates. I'd like to debate him now because we should debate. We should debate for the good of the country. Well, if I were him, I'd want to debate me too. Ha ha ha. He's got nothing else to do. So that was his quip back. Well, guess what, guys? You both should debate so we can see what's going on. If you're going to be the president, we should see you guys uh, hash it out. Well, Trump states that uh, Biden is... Likewise, not participated in any debates with the handful of long-shot Democratic contenders challenging him for the party's nomination because he's incapable of formulating a sentence. And a uh, human pulled over for using Apple internet goggles while driving. Let's go ahead and tune into this. Check this out. Welcome to the future. The future is now, and it is today. Amazing how he's keeping the goggles on. And this is how you go viral, folks. Well done. Migrants allegedly snatched phones from 62 women in New York City crime spree. State police. The suspects allegedly used the stolen phones to purchase items with Apple Pay. So yeah, the crime spree continues. Uh, this was just overnight. This wasn't over a period of time since they arrived. This was just uh, overnight. Seven suspects are expected to be charged with multiple robberies and grand larcenies, and more individuals are being currently sought. Suspects are all believed to be from Venezuela. There you have it. All of those criminals that they let out of jail and bust up through Panama and said, go ahead and uh, have fun in America. And of course, all these groups helping them. Uh, they're linked to a pattern of at least 62 incidents of women having their pocketbooks and phones snatched. They're also uh, using the internet to communicate and uh, uh, get these like mobs, these rob mobs on the go. Coin that term, rob mob, Sigma Tiger. Craig Wright trial starts today. Will Satoshi Nakamoto finally be unveiled? Who the heck is Satoshi Nakamoto? Well, if you follow Sigma Tiger Trade, check it out at Sigma Tiger Trade on YouTube, uh, you would know that Satoshi is the creator of Bitcoin, which is now not a criminal thing anymore because the SEC has gone ahead and allowed ETFs to open up by BlackRock. And again, if you don't know who they are, they're like the biggest uh, thing going with regards to owning everything. They own like the majority of stocks. It's like a hedge fund, like Vanguard. Check those out if you're interested. Well, Craig Wright is a guy who said, uh, guess what, everybody? <laughs> I'm Satoshi. Haha. <laughs> so what's going on here? No one believes him. Dr. Craig Wright first claimed to be the Bitcoin inventor, Satoshi Nakamoto, in 2016, but has yet to present any convincing evidence to back up his claim. A lawsuit brought by the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, COPA, kicks off on Monday, February 5th. Wright will need to make a compelling argument that he is who he claims to be. Otherwise, his Bitcoin copyright claims could be dashed for good. Well, literally, all he has to do is just transfer money from Satoshi's wallet. Case closed. How did he have access to the wallet that hasn't moved any Bitcoin? It has like, I don't know how many million Bitcoin in it, maybe seven or something like that. Well, imagine he just moved them to his wallet. Case closed. If he can't do that, that's all he needs to do. For as long as Wright has been publicly asserting that he authored the Bitcoin white paper, skeptics have pointed out that he really was Satoshi. If he really was Satoshi, he could easily prove it by signing a message with Nakamoto's verified PGP key or demonstrating ownership of one of the first Bitcoin private keys ever created. Yeah, there it is. Boom. Uh, intellectual property at stake. Uh, members including Coinbase, Kraken, MicroStrategy, and WorldCoin, uh, the one by Sam Altman, COPA's stated mission is to encourage the adoption and advancement of cryptocurrency technologies and to remove patents as a barrier to growth and innovation. The organizer's uh, hot juicy beef with Wright stems from his attempts to copyright the Bitcoin white paper and parts of the Bitcoin database. The feud started when Wright attempted to sue various members for billions of dollars alleging intellectual property theft. In response, COPA filed a counter suit hoping to shut his copyright claims down for good. Um, he tried to settle with them. They rejected it. And uh, the court case continues. So it seems like a bit of a money grab for this guy. And, uh, well, whoa, hang on here. It's not just the Venezuelans coming up through uh, the border in El Paso, Eagle Pass, Texas. Chinese are using TikTok to cross the U.S. border. Hang on. So it's not young women and children that are coming up needing our help. Let them in. Give them a package. 
ten thousand a day. New package uh, that's going through the Senate says fourteen hundred a day minimum allowed to go through and be processed. Twenty billion in funds to process the migrants. Well, guess what? They're not uh, mommy and daddies. Okay, they're uh, military age criminals from South America that were released from prison and now Chinese. Step-by-step -step instructions for hiring smugglers, coyotes, and detailed directions to that hole we visited were struck by just how orderly and routine it all seemed, 60 Minutes said. So this is mainstream now. Check it out. What do we got here? We found had step-by-step -step instructions for hiring smugglers and detailed directions to that hole we visited. We were struck by just how orderly and routine it all seemed. The migrants walked about a half mile down a dirt road and waited in line for U.S. Border Patrol to arrive so they could surrender. We wondered how all of these migrants knew about this particular entryway into California. The answer was in their hands. Oh, you learned on TikTok. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you have it. So it's not even um, Texas. They're going in through California. So if you want to get in America, just hop on TikTok, whatever country you're from, and get in quick because uh, that hole is getting smaller. The window's closing. Adam Brighton, crocodile expert who raped and killed dogs in Darwin, has his sentencing delayed. Are you kidding me? This dude should have a... Uh, uh, a small cage underground that he lives in. A dog rapist who sexually abused and killed animals in his torture room shipping container has had a sentencing delayed. British-born crocodile expert Adam Brighton, 52, pleads guilty to 60 charges, including bestiality, which is bestiality here, clearly a uh, editing error. Animal cruelty and possession of child abuse material last September. Both his lawyer and the prosecution were set to make submission on Brighton's Sentencing last December, but the matter was postponed to this Tuesday. Brighton's team requested more time to examine a psychiatric report they received on Friday last week, which could be used to reduce the abuser's sentence. Of course, because he's a little bit crazy, so we gotta, like, you know, hey, it's okay. It's okay. We understand. You need some help. You're not deserving of anything too severe. The prosecution also requested the sentence submission be delayed so it could prepare its own psychiatric report in response. Yeah, one that he's clinically insane and literally should never see the light of day again. And there it is, and that's the reason why I said it, because look inside, you can see uh, a bed that uh, looks like it broke mid-pump, and a soiled mattress, absolutely disgusting, and I'm sure there's... Uh, you know, you put a UV light in there, you're, and uh, uh, you're going to vomit, okay? The sadistic former zoologist who previously worked with Sir David Attenborough is now set to face court again in May. While his sentencing was delayed for another three months, Chief Justice Grant said it was unlikely the expert psychological report would reduce culpability of Brighton's actions. I hold fire on it, obviously, but I just can't see how evidence as to a psychological condition, whether you describe it as paraphilia or zoo sadism, operates to reduce moral culpability for the product of that condition. Yeah, the dude is a sick individual and he did sick things while living in a society, a civilization, civilized society, acting civil towards each other. You know, that's what we do. Let's be nice to each other. Let's live under a, a, a set of rules and laws and we'll try to follow them and the ones who don't, we'll punish. And everyone's aware of this. You know, unless you have terrible parents who were evil and didn't teach you anything, okay? Probably this guy's parents. Well, that needs to be looked into. If his parents were normal and he actually chose to do all this kind of stuff and he was never abused or traumatized as a kid, he's just a sick individual, then yeah, just get rid of him, okay? Death penalty. Here we go. This woman knows exactly what I'm talking about. And that's what it is. What's the point? Okay, I get it, moral, without shalt not kill and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's thou shalt not murder. It's not kill. Killing is okay. Killing in self-defense is okay. Not in Canada. But anyway, he can't get away with these heinous crimes. Now as brief as asking for a psychological test to check his suitability for rehabilitation. How can that work? How can we let this monster back into a community with defenseless, voiceless, innocent animals? And anyone else? 
All right. TikTok star Rachel Queen Burton pleads guilty to child abuse offenses. Pedophile abused two children before transition. TikTok star amassed thousands of followers claiming to be a proud trans woman, but she was really a pedophile using her new identity as a mask. Her victims have told a court. If you're unaware, there's a new term going around uh, attempting to reduce the impact of the word pedophile and its stigma on these people, creating a victim uh, mentality for the people who uh, are attracted to minors. So they've go ahead and relabeled the pedos minor attracted persons, MAPS. So keep your ears peeled for that term. Rachel Queen Burton, 44, repeatedly abused two children before stalking their family and driving them to homelessness. Burton then donned a mask, her victims say, and transitioned to life as a woman. She pleaded guilty to aggravated counts of producing and possessing child exploitation material, gross indecency, and indecent assault. Harrowing victim impact statements from Burton's two victims, a boy and a girl. Her older sibling and the children's mother were heard in court Tuesday. Burton, who joined via video link from a male prison, sobbed as the children's mother detailed the permanent impacts of that abuse. And there is a photo of the individual. You are a gross, phony, self-indulgent thing who has cheated my children out of so much and took it away from them without care, the mother read out. In your online rants, you showed no remorse for your bad behavior, all while knowing what you had done. Getting an audience for your false life was far more important. You can wear a mask. You can wear any mask you like, but the truth is out and everybody knows who you really are finally. The offending occurred at various locations in regional South Australia in 2019 before Burton became an aspiring TikTok star. Arrested in 2022... They uh, boasted 34,000 fans and on the social media platform. Her TikTok bio described her as a proud trans woman living my best life with no regrets. No regrets. And again, like, you know, uh, let God sort them out. Great. But this person is a monster. Uh, and she took the innocence of uh, children. Which you cannot return. Okay? That's the whole thing. Mental illness is usually caused by trauma. And if you don't know... Like, a uh, bully sometimes becomes, uh, or bullied so may become a bullied, or an abused may become an abuser. There's, it's cyclical sometimes, especially with sexual abuse and a violent abuse. For some reason, it's like a virus. Perhaps it's demonic. Perhaps they're actually spreading some sort of evil spirit around. We don't know. I don't claim to know, but perhaps, you know, because it's getting pretty biblical around here these days. So what's going on? This person is sick absolutely sick and what should be done locked up forever absolutely all right there it is the news for today thank you for joining again remember 10,000 subs the mask comes off let's get this rocking the sig tig community is growing every day like subscribe throw a comment down there tell me what you like go ahead and check out at sigma tiger trade for all your financials go ahead and make some of that magic internet money sigma tiger signing